let's do an example where we worked through a function with two variables subject to one inequality constraint. So we're going to maximize f of x, y is equal to x squared plus x, y plus y squared subject to g of x, y equals x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 1. So this is just the unit disk in R2 and we want to minimize this nice quadratic function on it. And seemingly that should not be such a difficult problem. The, so the first thing that we'll typically do, of course, is we'll check the non-degenerate constraint qualification. on this boundary. Well, we've got that the gradient of g at this point xy is going to be equal to, of course, 2 times xy, which of course is not going to be equal to 0 if g of x, y is equal to 1 because it's on the unit circle. So the constraint has been satisfied. So now we form the Lagrangian. put our function x squared plus xy plus y squared minus lambda x squared plus y squared minus 1. Now we write down the first order conditions. that are given to us by the theorem. We have partial of L with respect to X is going to be equal to two. So I'm, I'm already factorizing this for convenience. Plus Y is equal to zero. We have partial of L with respect to Y is equal to Y plus two times one minus lambda and that should be an x and the y here is equal to zero. Of course, we've got the complementary slackness condition, which is lambda x squared plus y squared minus one is equal to zero. So one of those is going to have to be equal to zero. And then we've got the inequality constraints that, of course, we must have. And of course, lambda is greater than or equal to zero, as we observed before. So now the fourth step is uh, find points satisfying the first order conditions. Uh, and generally, we want to start with uh, the partial of L with respect to X and the partial of L with respect to Y. So if we combine these two equations, right, so this is just a linear equation where we think of the linear equation with coefficients in, in lambda, uh, then this implies that we have 2 times 1 minus lambda. 1, 1, 2 times 1 minus lambda, x and y, this entire thing has to be 0. So either
x is equal to y is equal to 0. Or the determinant of this matrix is equal to 0. Those are our two, two real options that are available to us. Well, if x is equal to y is equal to 0, then we have to have that lambda is equal to 0 by the complementary slackness condition. So if x equals y is equal to 0, then lambda, of course, has to be equal to 0 by complementary slackness. And we just get the point 0, 0, 0, satisfying the first order conditions. Now, of course, in the other situation, right, so the, re so the reason this happens, of course, is that, well, then, if, if x and y are both not 0, right, so one of them is non-zero, then I've got that my matrix sends something to 0. And that means that it's degenerate. It's got to be singular. So let's, let's calculate this determinant. Well, this determinant is going to be 2, 1 minus lambda squared. So I'll have 4 times 1 minus lambda squared. And then I'll have minus 1 times 1, which is 2. This is equal to, just working it all out, we'll have 4 lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 4. Uh, this will be minus 1, rather. That's a minus 1. Minus 1 is equal to 4 lambda squared minus 8 plus 3. And if we factorize that thing, we'll get 2 lambda minus 3 times 2 lambda minus 1. And of course, that's equal to 0 in this situation and there we therefore we conclude in this situation under this case we have that lambda is equal to three halves or one half well if lambda is equal to one half our system of equations, or the uh, first equation that we would have, becomes 2. So we had 2 times 1 minus lambda x plus y is equal to 0. So 0 is equal to this thing. But now this is equal to 2 times 1 minus 1 half x plus y. And that'll just give me 1 half, which will cancel with the 2. And so I have x plus y. So we have x is equal to negative y. And that means that when we plug into x squared, 0 is equal to x squared plus y squared minus 1, right? So in this situation, that means that, right, because of the complementary slackness, we have to have that the constraint has to be satisfied. Well, this is going to be equal to 2y squared minus 1. And therefore, y is equal to plus or minus square root 2 over 2. Similarly, if lambda is equal to 3 halves, you can run through the same game. And you get that y is also equal to... Uh, or you'll get that y is equal to x and that y is equal to still again plus or minus square root 2 over 2. And so you get four points from the situation. You get square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, three halves. So if they have the same sign, that's associated with three halves. Negative square root 2 over 2, negative square root 2 over 2, 3 halves, square root 2 over 2, negative square root 2 over 2, 
1 half square root 2 over 2 negative square root 2 over 2 1 half and now we can calculate so the fifth step is uh, identify the max Right, so that first point that we found was f of 0, 0, which is going to be equal to 0 when we plug it in. f of square root 2 over 2, negative square root 2 over 2 is going to be equal to f of negative square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2, which is going to be square root 2 over 2 squared minus square root 2 over 2 times square root 2 over 2 plus square root 2 over 2 squared which is going to be equal to 1 half ultimately similarly but differently if they have the same sign negative here and a negative square root 2 over 2 here then we're going to obtain a value of 3 halves so therefore square root 2 over 2 square root 2 over 2 and negative square root 2 over 2 negative square root 2 over 2 are maxes